Hello, this is the Red Panda, and today's tutorial is Prospecting 101. Today we'll be covering how to use stock parts and stock means to scan for stock ore. We'll cover all three of the major parts, and in a future tutorial, which I'm going to be calling Prospecting 102, we will cover using ScanSat, USI, and the Community Resource Pack, and all of the functions with those mods, using the same basic means as we'll cover here today. It's important that this video be watched first because this video will cover the basics of using these systems and the 102 tutorial will cover the advanced means and we'll assume that you have watched this video. Thank you for watching and let's get started. We're going to cover how to use the three main components, the M700 Survey Scanner, the M4435 Narrowband Scanner, and the Surface Scanning Module. We'll cover both orbital and ground use of the narrowband scanner, we'll cover the ground use of the surface scanning module, and then we'll talk about some tricks uh, to make the process easier as we go along, and at the end we'll cover some frequently asked questions that came up when I was putting these slides together during a Twitch stream. First of all, let's introduce the M700 Survey Scanner. It's the basic scanner, it was introduced in 1.0 of KSP and it is designed to gather data from a polar orbit. It has a deployed and non-deployed form, as you can see here to the right of the slide. Uh, when it's not deployed, it's a fairly narrow object that fits kind of nicely on the end of a 1.25 fuel tank, although if you want to put it inside a fairing, you're probably going to have to go out a bit from the 1.25 uh, footprint, um, but it's easily fitting within a 2.5 meter profile. It has a minimum and maximum altitude that it is useful for. By default these are 25,000 meters or 25 kilometers and 1.5 million meters or 1,500 kilometers. However these are modified by the actual radius of whatever it's scanning. So I've chosen to use Minmus as my example for today. Minmus has a radius of 60 kilometers. So you take uh, 60,000 meters, divide it by 10, and that gives you 6,000 meters. So the minimum stays at 25,000 meters, or 25 kilometers. And 60,000 times 5 is 300,000. Uh, that is smaller than the 1.5 million meters. So the new max becomes 300,000 meters, or 300 kilometers. So you must have your orbit in between those two numbers. That means that both your apoaps and periaps must be inside that area. If you dip below or above at one of the points, you will not be considered to be in a stable orbit for purposes of scanning. You also cannot be in a flyby because obviously your apoapsis then is above the number we've got listed for the max altitude because your max altitude would basically be infinity at that point. Your inclination, that is how you're orbiting around the body, must be above 80 degrees, which means that anything from 81 to 99 roughly is a valid inclination around the orbit of the planet. And we can give you a demonstration of that here in a moment. And you must have an antenna to transmit the data for it to be valid. If you don't have an antenna, when you tell it to do the survey, it will say basically, I can't do it, there's no antenna. Um, so let's go over and see the uh, the details here, shall we? Here we have a simple probe with an M700 scanner on it in orbit around Minmus. The scanner is in the deployed mode right now. By right clicking on it, you can retract. And you can deploy the scanner. It does have a collision box. You'll want to make sure it has room. This is a 1.25 fuel tank with a Terrier engine on it to give you an idea of scale. You can take a look at our orbit and we're currently in a polar orbit around Minmus. You can pretty much eyeball a polar orbit with great effect. You don't really have to get it exact when you're using this method. If we take a look at our Kerbal Engineer here and say Show Engineer, you can see that our inclination at the moment is 89.3. That's well within our margin of error. In fact, that's pretty much exactly right. Our periaps and apoaps, our apoaps is currently 211, and our periaps is currently 205, well within the range. 
by doing that, we are able to give ourselves a nice safe orbit that's well within our indications for our scan. Now, when you approach your planet or moon that you're going to be scanning, you want to try to encounter your target from either the top or bottom so that you're already approaching in a polar encounter. If you actually approach and get an actual equatorial orbit, you're going to find that it takes a lot of delta V to change from an equatorial orbit to a polar orbit. Make sure that your inclination is within that 80 degree margin. If you're going to be scanning Kerbin itself, don't launch into a normal polar or, or equatorial orbit. Be sure to switch it to a polar orbit in your launch. Uh, just start heading north instead of heading east and you'll be fine. Um, because shifting that orbit can have a very high delta V cost. Remember to check your minimum and maximum altitudes in advance before approaching a body. Uh, this can make a lot of difference in how high you want your orbit to be when you first approach. Make sure that it is a viable body to scan as well. There's a couple of situations where it's hard to get within that radius, um, in particular for things like, for example, Gilly um, and, and other very small bodies. Uh, I think there may be some very small bodies in the Outer Planets mod that this might apply to as well, but again, things that we might cover in Prospecting 102 or even 103 if we're going to talk about Outer Planets. Remember that the scanner is relatively light. It's less than uh, less than a quarter of a ton. It's 0.2 tons. That means it's 200 kilograms. That's why you can get away with putting it on such a lightweight rocket. Uh, if you're in career mode or science mode, remember that you can pack a bunch of science on there. And if you're in a polar orbit, you're probably going to be passing over every biome at some point, and so you can just sort of use the science scanners to get as much as you can over each of the biomes, depending on which technology trees you're using and that kind of thing. This will help you return your maximum investment on the probe in the first place. So what do you do? Well, as we showed over here, we have our little scanner, so let's go back to the game capture, and let's go back to our probe itself, and you can see that we actually have already scanned with this. Normally there would be an initiate scan and if you're outside of the proper orbit or inclination it would tell you what it is. So you don't actually have to do the math if you've already got it in orbit. And once you've done the scan, you'll get an overlay showing up on the body that you've scanned and it will tell you your average or amount on that body. In this case 2.92% as an average. You can change a cutoff, retract the scanner, and toggle the overlay. Let's go to our map view, which is what we'll be covering here momentarily on the slide. Here you've got the ore, and by clicking on that, it highlights that material. Now you can change how it's displayed by clicking on here. This will change the colors that it's displayed as, and you can change the style. A bunch of little dots, some splotches, the lines, and that's pretty much it. I kind of like the splotches, and then I tend to shift to colors like that so that it's a distinct difference. The other thing to note is the cutoff here, and um, as you raise that cutoff number, it eliminates anything that's below that percentage. So if we take a look here, we've raised it to 60%, and we can see where the highest concentrations are. If we raise it to 70, you'll see their only colored splotches are here nowhere else and if we raise it to 80 those vanish too. So what you do is you raise it until you get to the point where you can actually see a difference and see where it's actually going to vanish completely then back it off a notch and that allows you to find the ideal uh, areas for the maximum ore on that planetary body. Now, interestingly enough it says on our window here I don't know if you can see it but it says 4.1 percent here Whereas when we were on the map view, off of map view, and we right clicked here, it said 2.92 average. Now that's an interesting difference, isn't it? See? 4.1 and 2.92. Now it's a little bit tricky with this. Um, I'm not exactly sure how these numbers are calculated. I can only tell you that this number seems to be more accurate in general than the number that actually is displayed on the scanner itself. And that since we're talking only basic principles, we're just trying to find 
maximum concentration locations for ore. So when you finish your scan with the M700, you will uh, select the body you're uh, orbiting and then uh, go to the map window and click on this little handy button right here and it will let you see the resource distribution, this little sub window here, and then you can adjust the cutoff and the color like we did, talked about, focus on the higher values, and focus on where your highest concentrations are. But remember we've got that 4.1 as our average for Minmus. Now once you have that data you're going to want to get more exact data because this doesn't give us any numbers, at least not any ground numbers. So you're, after you've used the M700 data, you will see rough concentrations on the body you scanned. Again, these are approximate and they're graphical, and that's all I can say about them other than they do give you a rough idea of where you need to be going. Uh, and so to get the average biome values, you're going to need to pull out the M4435 narrowband scanner. Now there are a couple things I want to warn you about about the narrowband scanner, and the best way to do that is to go back to our KSP program. This is the small narrowband scanner. It's called, it has detected all written on the side of it, model 4435. It is a narrowband scanner and it rotates when it's active. Now, this is something you need to pay close attention to because it's something that can cause you a lot of grief if you don't pay attention to it in advance. And let me demonstrate that right here. We're going to take this part and we're going to clip it in as close as we can. Now that looks like it's a reasonable location, right? It looks like everything would be fine there. But if we go and launch this, so we've gone to launch it. If we zoom in and right click on the scanner and click activate, you'll see how it has a collision mesh that can collide with things. I've seen entire spacecraft explode due to that interaction with the collision mesh on the narrowband scanner. So be very aware of that when you're designing your craft and make sure that you make sure there's enough room for the scanner to rotate properly uh, when you place it on your rocket. So here we even have that warning about it on our slide. The, uh, it has a maximum altitude of 50 or uh, 500,000 kilometers uh, or 500 500,000 meters or 500 kilometers, but it can go down all the way to the surface. So one of the things you will find is that you probably want to put this on whatever rover you're using to find the exact best location for your ore. Uh, and so we'll talk about using it both in orbit and using it from the ground. Be aware that that little interface box gives you a plus and minus uh, four degree latitude and longitude variance. Uh, that means that it will show you a different amount of space depending on what planet you're over. Uh, so here are the limitations that we were just discussing. It only displays the map directly under the probe. The, it will show you your longitude and latitude but it has no zoom function. And here you can see how it gives us some different values. Uh, when masked over, it will show you each biome that it's over, as we demonstrated, and that it is a static image and that you need to hit refresh to change the display of what it's directly over. Uh, so it's great for sort of honing in on which biomes you're going to want to look at, but it doesn't give you where in that biome you're going to want to drill for ore, assuming you want to maximize your prospecting abilities. So now we need to talk about the surfing, surface scanning module, and we're talking about this in context with using the M4435 on the surface. And for that purpose, we're going to go take a look at a rover that I've landed on Minmus, and we're going to play around with it a little bit so that you can see exactly how to best figure out where to put your drills. So here we have a cute little rover that I designed. I flew this up to Minmus, and it's important to note some of the things that we put on it. Uh, first of all, I've used RCS so that we can move around efficiently, even though Minmus has very low gravity for using rover wheels. Second of all, I do have a M4435 scanner on the top, and I very carefully placed it so that it was clipping with nothing. And here is our surface scanning module. Now, I've already clicked on the scan biome, but normally there would be a button here, and it would 
scan the entire biome that you're in and you need to do that for each biome as you're traveling along. It will tell you the biome, it will tell you your longitude and latitude, and it will tell you the concentration of ore where you are at that exact moment. The reason you want to bring this guy is because all this guy does is tells you where the ore is right where you are. It does not tell me what the ore is over here or over here or down over here. You know, looking down at this big flat here, where would you figure out where the highest ore level was? Well, that's where the 4435 or the NBS comes in handy. If we turn on the GUI by right-clicking on it and say toggle the scanner GUI, now when we mouse over the Great Flats because we've done the surface scanning of this biome, you'll see that we show all the variation in this biome. So way up here we've got 6.5, but all the way down where we here are down here we've got 8.7 8.572, but if we mouse over the lowlands, which we have not used the uh, surface scanning module on, you will see that it doesn't have any variation. If we went over there and ran the scanner over there, we would see all the variation within that biome. So you can see like here the slopes, we have no variation, but as soon as we go over the greater flats, we do. And again, you can change the color to make it easier for the biome shifts and that kind of thing. So. Uh, so this allows you to look at a particular biome and determine where in that biome you want to put your drill. So what I recommend is that you build a rover, something like this, land it in an area that you think has high levels of resources after using the M700 in orbit and then the narrow band scanner, and then land the rover in that location, use the uh, surface scanning module to determine the actual concentrations inside the area, activate this so that you can figure out where you want to go, drive the rover over to that location, park it, and then try to put your drill there. This tutorial is not covering how to land drills uh, on a specific spot, but just the prospecting aspects. Um, you may have your own favorite way of landing a drill in a particular spot. You might even put a mini drill here for that matter. Um, but for the important parts is that you need to have the surface scanning module before this part will show you the variances throughout the biome so that you can actually find the hot spots inside that biome. That's very important. So after you scan it, it no longer shows the average value for the biome, but the exact value and allows you to find hot spots, like we just said. Uh, my Minmus had an average of 4.1 with the M700. Uh, when we looked at the biome before we scanned it with the surface uh, scanning module, it said 6.2. Uh, and there are several areas of this biome that have much lower than where we are right now. But remember, it only shows sort of a zoomed-in area, and I can't change how far the, the broadband scanner zooms in or out. And then I was able to find a hot spot within that 6.2 after using the surface scanning module of 8.6 uh, with the ore. Remember, the surfing scanning module will only show you the value exactly where you are, which can be handy. You can right-click on it, get it to start displaying as you're driving along, or you can have the GUI up for the, uh, the 4435 and then just keep hitting refresh because it automatically centers your uh, scanning object over wherever you're scanning. So for example, as I'm driving along, I can drive like 100 meters, click refresh, and it will change the center of that uh, interface of the display so that you can see exactly where you are. So a couple of tricks, make sure you use the M700 first as the, the narrow band scanner and the surface scanning parts do not work until after you've done an M700 scan. It will say, unable to use this part until I've used the M700. Uh, when scouting out a hotspot, use the map by pushing the, uh, go to the map view uh, and look at it in an orbital position and make sure you've displayed the ore and then push up the cutoff percentage until you don't see anything, then back it off one notch, then target the area that still shows. That's going to be your highest concentration of ore. Take a look at what biome that is. Uh, so then you uh, land a rover to scout out the position. Make sure you include both the 4435 and the surface scanning module at the same time. Uh, then you can do the surface scanning and then use the GUI from the M4435 in order to actually pin down the exact hot spots. If you're worried about a biome's values uh, specifically because you're not getting enough information from the graphical interface from the M700, be aware you can put uh, the M4435 on the same probe that you have an M700 on and be able to look down 
Now, mind you, you can only look down exactly to the spot you're over, but as you scan around the planet, if you make sure that your probe is directly over a spot and click on the GUI, you can take a snapshot, mouse over it, and it'll tell you which biome is which, and you can find which biome has the highest average of ore. Um, another thought is that the difference between 7.5 and 8% might not be worth a lot of hassle if you realize that you're going to have to go several kilometers or to an, another entire part of the map in order to get that 0.5 variation and increase it probably isn't going to mean much in the long run so you you know you, you're going to need to make sure that you get s some of the higher concentration spots but you probably don't need to make sure you get the highest concentration spot a um, couple of questions uh, what is the stock ore distribution by default? Uh, the ore has a 100% chance in each biome. Um, the range is 1 to 15%. Uh, but there's uh, some settings that indicate how the variation plays out inside each biome. This means that even though it has a 100% chance and that it should go from 1 to 15%, you can end up below 1% because there are hot spots and cold spots. And theoretically, you can exceed 15%. If you have a biome that came in at like, oh, I don't know, let's say 14 or 13 percent, you might find a variation that took you all the way up to 18 percent. Um, but the but the core values are 1 to 15 percent. Some locations have absolutely no ore, uh, and they are set as such by default. Sun, Jewel, some water spots on Lathe, and water spots on Kerbin. When customizing the game at the start, what does the resource abundance value do? Uh, if you go into Customize Game, you'll see a slider for Resource Abundance, and it goes from 120% all the way down to something like, I think, it may go down to 10%. I'm not sure exactly what the minimum is. <laughs> In the stock game, raising it above 100 does nothing, because what this changes is it changes the percent chance for an ore to exist in the specific biome. Since you already have 100% chance, increasing it to 120% does nothing. But if you lower it, you now have less than 100% chance for an ore to exist in a particular biome. When we cover Prospecting 102, you'll see that a lot of ores have like a 50% chance for a biome, or a 25% chance for a biome, or a 30% chance for a biome. And so you'll see that uh, changing that to 120 can help you significantly because it increases the number of biomes that would have that ore and raise the planetary average as well. Do resources run out? No. Apparently there is a mechanic in the game to allow it to run out, but right now no mods use it as far as I'm aware of. However, be aware asteroids can be depleted. They have a set amount of ore, and as you mine it out, poof, it's gone. What do you do to prospect asteroids? You do not use the scanning mechanisms that we just put on display to scan asteroids. Simply attach a clawed ship to it with a claw, and the claw should give you the values for ore on the asteroid. Um, it will also tell you the mass of the asteroid and interesting things like that. When prospecting ore, if time is not a factor and there's a 100% distribution of ore, why worry about the percentages? Well, if time is not a factor, there is the fact that the Drillomatic Junior requires you to have at least 2.5% density of ore. If it's below 2.5, that drill will not work. So you need to make sure that you have at least 2.5 for that drill to work and of course, the higher the density, the faster the drills are going to pull the ore out for you. So that ends the frequently asked questions. I did want to touch on one last thing, and that is resource seeds. In your save game, there is a specific value that is a number that represents your resource seed. This number is randomly generated at the beginning of creating the save game. This number determines your resource allocation throughout the entire save. This is why each save game has a different resource distribution. If you take the number from one save game that you like with a very good resource distribution, you can copy it out of that saved game and put it in a different save game, and the new game will now have the same resource distribution if you've put the same resource seed into the system. So be aware that the resource seed is something that is set randomly and is why every save game has a different value for resources at a particular location, but it is something that can actually be copied and shared and actually 
changed in the save game file. I hope that answered most of your questions here. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what kind of comments we have here and I will make a point of trying to answer any questions that are attached to the video on YouTube or are sent to my uh, theredpanda.com website email address. Um, I will try to answer those questions in Prospecting 102. I think we covered the basics here pretty well today. Please note these slides were created by the Red Panda. That's R-E-A-D Panda. Um, you can find me at various locations, including twitch.tv, the Red Panda, uh, theredpanda.com, my own website. We also have a YouTube channel, which hopefully you're watching this video on. And I'm also on Twitter uh, as the Red Panda. Um, so I hope you stay tuned and give this YouTube channel a follow, and we'll cover Prospecting 102 in the near future. I've had several requests to also cover um, the second part of building things using EPL, uh, extra planetary launch pads, after my USI EPL video that I did prior to this. Uh, we may cover that as well. We've got a lot of different things that I want to cover tutorial-wise, so we've certainly got no end of things to look at. Uh, so thank you again for watching, and remember, fly safe out there, guys.